Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing, but remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. This is going to be a real quick video, no notes. Let me just say, Bob Arum, who used to represent Manny Pacquiao, came out with some really strong statements. Pacquiao is now in his 40s, and Bob Arum said that he thought Pacquiao was really risking his health by continuing to fight. Let me just say, I agree with him. I think as we get older, right, as we enter our 40s, once you're past your prime, several years past it, and you're into your 40s, I don't think the body recovers as well as it did when you're in your 20s. I've seen guys get absolutely shellacked. I've seen guys have very physical careers. Think Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Walk away from the sport early and be 100% 20 years later, right? The secret is, of course, they walked away early. I've also seen fighters who stuck around a little bit too long, got hit with some shots late, and who suddenly lost it, right? Started to retreat from the public view. Stopped giving interviews. When you saw the fighter, their face even looked different. Boxing's a brutal sport. Yes, the risk to Manny Pacquiao is real. I'm not here to belittle it. But there's another side of the coin, isn't there? Pacquiao is a grown man. He gets to make his own decisions. Let me also say too, as someone who was in his 20s once and his 30s, you know, the money you get then, especially when you haven't had money before, is like Monopoly money. You think the faucet is never going to be turned off. I completely understand people with tens of thousands of dollars of student loans, right? You're Signing the promissory note thinking, man, I got all the time in the world to pay this off, right? And if I don't, too bad for the bank. Manny Pacquiao is a guy who's lived a little bit. I believe those paychecks from his 20s are long gone, right? Let's just say he doesn't strike me as the kind of guy who at 22, 23 got a boatload of money and then decided to put it in gold, right? I, I just... I just think most young men get the money and do other things with it. There was a baseball pitcher, Tug McGraw. He was asked what he did with his money. He said, well, I spent some on women, I spent some on wine, and the rest I wasted. Right? That's the attitude. So the problem is, now, at 40, Manny Pacquiao is a household name. Now, at 40, Manny Pacquiao is getting money for fights that he didn't get before. Sure, he made a lot of money on certain fights, right? The Floyd Mayweather fight. But understand now, just as a matter of course, Manny Pacquiao is making millions of dollars. As a matter of course. It's time to pay all those bills on the loans you took out in your 20s and 30s, right? The financial side can't be ignored. Let's also talk about boxing. Let's face it. Keith Thurman is vulnerable. I know many of you don't believe that, right? Keith Thurman hasn't had a good fight from start to finish, literally, for years. For years. Right? Interestingly enough, he didn't run to fight the guys he beat in the past who were big fights, guys who were waiting for redemption. Right? He's not running to fight Sean Porter. He's not running to fight Danny Garcia. I'm just telling you, both Sean Porter and Danny Garcia would love another crack at Keith Thurman. No, Keith Thurman, after looking bad against Jose Cito Lopez, has turned to the 40-something Manny Pacquiao. Right? He's looking at fighters... 40 and over to fight. 
I believe Manny Pacquiao sees a beatable opponent. I don't think Manny Pacquiao expects to get hit hard in the fight. Right? So, understand there are two sides to the coin. I just want people to understand that this is like bullfighting is a violent sport. When a guy gets into his 40s and is continuing to fight, the health risk is real. There are many fighters I'd love to hear from before a big fight takes place who no longer give interviews, who have faded from the public light, who you wonder what happened to the fighter and then you find out that the fighter's in a different place. Right? That the fighter has retreated from public life and if you see photos of the fighter you realize the fighter's not fully himself anymore right that's boxing that's the nature of the sport let's shift gears let me just say I believe whenever you see a big clunky heavyweight era like this whenever you look at heavyweights and some of the stars lack basic skills Right? You saw Anthony Joshua on his back foot. Gee. You know, Deontay Wilder, when he hurts someone and he jumps in, he starts to windmill. Whenever I see that, I feel that more coordinated fighters who have actually focused on developing two hands, different punches, different strategies, right? Shortening punches, stuff like that. I believe those fighters have a chance. Now you have a WBSS cruiserweight tournament happening right now that you need to look long and hard at. Understand there are only two groups in boxing, right? In my opinion, an argument could be made for a third group. We'll talk about it. But the two groups are the heavyweight champion and everyone else, right? If I walk the streets in an era where you have some great fighters, right? Terence Crawford, Vasyl Lomachenko, Golovkin. If I walk the streets and I said, name me a fighter, I'm just telling you a hell of a lot of people are going to say Deontay Wilder. I'm just telling you people are going to default to the heavyweight division. If I said right now, name me a fighter from the 70s, many people are going to say Ali. If not him, Fraser. If not him, Foreman. In other words, you're going to run through heavyweight champions. If I said, name me a fighter from the 1980s, many people are going to say Larry Holmes. Many people are going to say Iron Mike Tyson. Right? Isn't that the way the world works? Now, there is a third group to some. Right? Not really to me, but to some. Of the best fighter in the sport pound for pound. Right? And Lord knows, boxing has had tremendous fighters who haven't been the heavyweight champion. Right, so a Sugar Ray Leonard, a Marvelous Marvin Hagler, a Roy Jones Jr. Right, they'll, they'll come to mind. Absolutely. But I'm just telling you right now that more people know about Anthony Joshua's loss than know about any of Terrence Crawford's fights. Right, that's just the way it is. So the fighters at Cruiserweight, as much as they're getting paid, they want the real money, and the real money is one division up, isn't it? It's the heavyweight division. Now, I'm just saying here, first, the big fight today, at least on paper, Glowacki versus Maris Breedis. Breedis already destroyed Manuel Char, folks, who, believe it or not, has a share of the heavyweight title now. Breedis too fluid. This fight's in Breedis' backyard. Breedis is a favorite. I think the fight's unbettable because of the odds. But let me just say, I expect Breedis to beat Glowacki simply because both guys fought Alexander Usyk. I thought Glowacki got destroyed. I thought Breedis held his own. Right? You give me Breedis in his backyard against a guy who... There is a blueprint on how to beat by several rounds. All someone has to do is to take out the Alexander Usyk film. Understand, Maris Breedis is the kind of guy 
who has a multiplicity of skills, who if there's a film out there on a guy getting destroyed by several rounds, I believe Breedis can duplicate it. I like Maris Breedis over Glowacki. I'm not betting on the fight because Breedis is a 3-1 to one favorite. Right? The odds to me are a little bit too slanted. But I do expect Breedis to win that fight. But for me, the fight of the weekend is Dordicos against Tabidi. That's the fight of the weekend. Let me say this about Dordicos. If, and I mean this, if Deontay Wilder had more boxing skills, if he had a left hand, if he threw punches in combinations, targeted punches, not windmill punches. If he had the long right hand that he could shorten by design. So that it's a short chopping right hand. He would be Dordicos. Dordicos, quite frankly, is a more advanced fighter than Deontay Wilder. Wilder, more successful. But Dordicos does more things in the ring. Both guys hit hard. Right? Both guys hit hard. Understand, Wilder's a guy who doesn't weigh that much more than Dordicos. Right? I'm surprised Dordicos is hanging around the cruiserweight division. Now he had a huge fight with Murat Gassiev, who by the way is now a heavyweight. I'm telling you, pay attention to the cruiserweight invasion of the heavyweight division. Folks, the heavyweight division right now is vulnerable to an invasion. Right? They're vulnerable. I believe Dordicos is a major talent. Right, I believe Gassiev is a threat to anyone at heavyweight. Right, the guy who beat Gassiev, you know him. He's also a heavyweight now. Alexander Usyk, the same guy who beat Breedis and Glowacki. Right, I'm just telling you, if you're looking at Tyson Fury right now, the fighter at heavyweight who would give him the most trouble who would turn it into a chess match. In fact, let me name two guys. Right? Clearly Usyk. Clearly Usyk. And probably Andy Ruiz, who even today is underrated. Well, let me just say, I consider Dordicos to be a monster. I think Dordicos is competitive at heavyweight if he wants. I think Dordicos has more boxing skills then Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder is a specialist. Right? I consider specialists to be relief pitchers. Right? Craig Kimbrell. Great fastball. Right? Doesn't have enough other pitches to be in the starting rotation. But as a relief pitcher, he can have a multi-million dollar career. I believe that's who Deontay Wilder is. Right? Dordicos, by contrast, can actually outbox you. Now, the question for me, and I don't have the answer. I'm just going to be watching this fight, hoping to get some answers. The question to, for me is, how good is Andrew Tabidi? Right? I'm just telling you, there are very few guys who you look at and you say, wow, this guy is a major talent. Andrew Tabidi is a major talent. He's kind of like Errol Spence in that he's older than you think. Right? He's 29 years old. To beat Dordicos, he's going to have to stay away from Dordicos's right hand, whether it's long or short. As I said, Dordicos is who Wilder would be if Wilder could actually jump in the pocket, box with you, and then throw a chopping right hand. That's not Wilder's style. Wilder doesn't want to engage. Wilder wants to hit you from across the street. Dordicos can hit you from across the street or right in front of your door. 
right? So what Tabidi is going to have to do to me is to get over on the left side of Dorticos. He's going to have to fight low. And he's going to have to take out Dorticos's body. I think the guy has the skill level to do that. This is a gambling site. Tabidi, to me, is a live dog. I'm just telling you that if he beats Dorticos, even though the fight is in Breedis' backyard, that WBSS cruiserweight final, which is going to be spectacular regardless, right? These four guys, whoever wins these two bouts, is going to make for a spectacular final. But understand, if Tibidi beats Dorticos, I believe of the four guys, Tibidi has the highest ceiling. That finals, whether he faces Glowacki or whether he faces Breedis, is going to be off the chain. Let me just say, too, that while this is a golden age of heavyweights from a box office standpoint, I want people to realize that we are just emerging from a golden age of cruiserweights from a boxing standpoint. Not box office, like the heavyweight division, but boxing standpoint. In other words, Alexander Usyk is one of the great fighters of the last 50 years. I'm not kidding. right? He's still unbeaten, Olympic gold medalist. Um, I don't see any of the heavyweight champions in a rush to fight him. I know the public was fawning over Anthony Joshua. Joshua doesn't come close to Usyk's fluidity. You might recall Tony Bellew being on a run. There's a point in that fight against Usyk where you understood that Tony was not going to go the distance in a fight in his backyard. Right? The knockout punch is as clean as clean gets. When Tony hits the canvas, you understood that the count was irrelevant. Because if he got up, he would not have been able to continue against Usyk. Well, I just want people to understand that Usyk got tested somewhat by both Gassiev and by Breedis. I'm not sure if Usyk gets tested that way by anybody in a heavyweight division. Understand in terms of prospects, Andrew Tabidi is about as good as it gets. Right? He's an athlete, folks. He's an athlete with boxing skills, with defensive skills. He can fight you outside. He can fight you inside. Right? So, the fight of the day, for me, in a, on a day when we have a heavyweight title fight, Tyson Fury, a guy who I believe is the top heavyweight, fighting Tom Schwartz, on a day where we have that fight, on a day where we have two guys who've held a cruiserweight title fighting each other, Glowacki against Breedis. I'm just telling you to the boxing hardcore here online, the fight to watch is Dorticos to Betty. Right? If Dorticos wins, okay, he's vowed vengeance. He feels he should have won the other WBSS and got caught. <laughs> right? He's vowed vengeance. He certainly one of the better boxers in the sport. But the real story is what happens if Tibetty wins. You're going to have a guy go from prospect to the finals of the WBSS with exemplary defensive skills. With athleticism that not every excellent fighter has. As I've said, I'm a big fan, have been for years, of Terrence Crawford. Crawford doesn't strike me as having cat-quick reflexes. Not everyone does. In other words, today, 
I'd still take 40-year-old Manny Pacquiao over Terence Crawford. We'll see what happens if that fight ever develops. Right? You have cat-like reflexes. If you're a superior athlete, even if you have a game that's predictable, I know Keith Thurman's going around saying Manny Pacquiao's predictable. Understand, with fastball pitchers, you know they're going to throw fastballs. There's no surprise. If I'm in the batter's box against Craig Kimbrell, I'm expecting fastballs. Right? How far did Mariano Rivera get on that split-fingered fastball? You know the fastball's coming. You just can't do a thing about it. Right? Tibetti is the athlete with boxing skills. If he beats Dorticos, be afraid, be very afraid, because I believe this is exactly the kind of guy who could pivot to the heavyweight division. The one knock on Usyk. And as I said, I feel the heavyweight division is going to get more agile. I believe it's going to get more skilled. It's going to get more coordinated. Right? The only knock on Usyk is age, isn't it? You'd rather Usyk be 29 than in his 30s. Tibet is 29. Right? Dortico's Tibetty, just from a boxing purist standpoint, is the fight of the day. It is the 15th of June, 2019. Must watch boxing. I like Tibetty, the underdog, just as a value play. Because I believe the guy is that talented. And understand he's fighting a guy with a long resume. Look up Dordikos' record. And let me just say too, if you've watched a Deontay Wilder fight, let's say you're watching Wilder against Fury and you're saying, man, why can't Wilder just step forward a bit? <laughs> Throw a more accurate left jab, right? Mix in hooks and actually engage with Tyson Fury. When Fury's around the pocket and Fury's ducking shots over his head, why doesn't Wilder have the ability to just shorten shots and throw punches down here where Fury is? Right? If you want to see those skills, what Wilder would look like if he had them, take a look at six foot three Dorticos. Right? Understand when I talk about a cruiserweight invasion of the heavyweight division, right, which is wealthier than the cruiserweight division. What I'm saying is these guys are big men. Don't think of the cruiserweights as 5'10", 5'11", guys, right? These guys, some of these guys have to lose weight to make cruiserweight. I personally was surprised that everyone made weight, right? These are big men who are serious threats to the crown jewel of boxing. And let's be clear here. That's the heavyweight title. That's how I see it. I'm taking Tabidi over Dorticos. Dangerous pick. I'm not recommending anyone come along for the ride. The Breedis, Glowacki fight. I expect Breedis to win that fight, but I'm on the sidelines. Right? I saw the odds. I'm like, look, I'm not one of these guys who bets regardless of the odds. But I do expect Breedis to beat Glowacki. We'll see how it turns out. Glowacki's dangerous. Losing to Usyk isn't anything to be ashamed about. It just means you've lost to one of the best in the sport. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.